Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So as you can see, I've got a lot of dubbing sitting on the table, and that is pretty much what we're going to be talking about today. The types of dubbing, um, granted, I don't have every type of dubbing out there. I just kind of grabbed a few different types that I've got. Um, <clears throat> but the types of dubbing, the uses for dubbing, um, why to use one, why to use another, and, uh, <clears throat> and whatnot. So let's get started. So first, everyone kind of thinks of dubbing as something that you put on dry flies, you know? So you've got your, uh, this is a dry fly dubbing. Um, it's called Microfine. It's by Hairline. And it's just super duper fine dubbing. It's really easy. You can, probably can't even see each one of those. But once you dub that onto your thread, I mean, it just almost disappears. You can make super thin noodles with it. And it's really easy to dub. Um, but again, this is really more for smaller flies um, <clears throat> and, uh, and dry flies because uh, this is going to um, basically try to float. So basically this repels a lot of water and therefore helps keep a, a hook, especially a dry fly hook, which are smaller diameter, up off the water. This and then the hackle that you use, you know, is going to be the thing that keeps it floating. Um, but that's a dry fly dubbing, and um, these these work really well. Uh, I do use them for other flies as well. Um, <clears throat> some people will use different um, than I do, but when I'm tying, um, I use microfine, or actually, I had to pull it off the wall, this super fine dubbing, when I'm doing heads on like midges, like really tiny midges because they're so small and this is so fine and it allows you really to get a really thin noodle, noodle, which is basically the super fine dry fly dubbing and the micro fine fly tight, uh, dry dubbing is pretty much uh, identical. It's just one's by Wopsy, one's by Hairline, but they're pretty much identical, but I just have this in black for using for, you can tell it's pretty much the same stuff there. Um, it, I use it for, uh, you know, heads on midges and whatnot, which generally I keep black. Um, <clears throat> so I use that quite a bit, uh, but this is good for like a dry fly caddis with that color. Um, but basically that's what you use, uh, use that for. Um, something really fine, easy to dub on. And then there, there is other dry fly dubbing out there. Um, I don't have a ton of different dry fly dubbing. I just don't tie a lot of dry flies. Um, but bullfrog is a good example. Now you might not have heard of it, if you don't regularly watch my channel, um, but it's by a company called Fly Tires Dungeon. And this is basically, it's dry fly dubbing, same kind of stuff. It's just a little longer of the fibers. So when you pull this out, the fibers are about that long versus the, the fine and dry, the micro fine and dry, they're maybe that long, okay? So there's much longer fibers and um, it's a little coarser as well. And so this ends up being better for bigger, larger dry flies. Now I have used this for other stuff, nymphs, and um, I've got a, a fly that I use um, that's actually a streamer that I use bullfrog du frog dubbing as well with it. Um, that's to give it a certain kind of buoyancy that I'm looking for. Um, but this does help things float, and so this would be really good for larger flies like, um, like large caddis or... Uh, or stone flies and you know basically larger bugs, right? You'd want to use a bullfrog or something bigger like that. So again, really fine, really easy to dub super thin noodles. This is a little thicker and uh, creates a larger, thicker noodle on your uh, dubbing thread. So um, basically, those are my two dry flies that I use, uh, dry dubs that I use. I don't use a lot. Um, but when I'm doing um, a lot of nymphs, I'll use a wide range of different dubbing. Um, <clears throat> I've done a few with the triolable dubbing, which is a little different. We'll go into that later. I've done some with the ice dub, which is super sparkly. You might be able to see that, you might not. Um, which is basically Angelina fiber. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but generally, you know, you're going to want something um, most of the time with... Uh, when you're tying nymphs, something you don't need super long, so you can tell that these fibers, see if I can pull a piece out that you can tell, um, they're not long at all. 
Um, they're pretty short fibers. Um, now, Hairtron, um, or uh, hairline dubbing, which is basically rabbit, that's kind of what it is. The Hairtron has little bits of uh, shiny, um, you know, stuff in it, which is basically the same thing as the hairline, just with with that the shiny, sparkly stuff. Um, both of those are pretty much made out of rabbit. Now, rabbit does not want to float. It doesn't repel... Um, Water and I've seen uh, seen people make dubbing out of like a CDC hackle, which would be a good dry fly dubbing, um, kind of more closer to this um, than the super fine. Um, this is not natural. That's another thing to think about. This is natural. This is a uh, rabbit, and this is partially natural, um, mostly natural, and a little bit of synthetic, right? Um, <clears throat> but when you're uh, this is this is all synthetic. Now there are some, you know, dry fly dubbings that are not synthetic, but you know, the, the synthetic seems to work just fine for me. Again, I don't tie a lot. A uh, hairline, you might not be able to see here, um, but these come with some guard hairs. So there's, uh, oops, none in that. There's some bigger, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see on camera, but there's some bigger, coarser hairs in there, which are basically come from a rabbit. And when they make this stuff, um, the dubbing when they're pulling it out. I mean those are going to be trapped in there and that's just what's going to happen So it actually can be a good thing because you're going to be using those and then it looks a little more buggy because there's these guard hairs coming out and it can you know especially on larger nymphs when you go tinier nymphs uh, You get something a little more with the synthetic you get something a little more uh, even and and doesn't have uh, different It's all all the fibers are exactly the same and so it's easier to get a more even noodle uh, but even isn't always what you want. And so you want something still with smaller nymphs or medium nymphs, something a little shorter fibered like that. Um, with larger nymphs, you need a little larger. Um, I've seen some people tie some nymphs with uh, stuff like this. You can tell those fibers much longer, and this is synthetic. Um, you can tie larger nymphs with it. But generally, when I get into something with a little longer fibers, uh, like this, I will, um, I will use this for dubbing heads for uh, streamers. So I'm sure you guys, if you've watched my channel, you've seen a ton of dubbing head um, flies. Uh, basically, I tie the fly and then I, I put uh, dubbing on the head to give uh, a finished look. So here we have a good example of a dubbing head. Now. Uh, this one I used uh, laser dub, so I actually used that exact laser dub, the olive, for the top part here. And I used a white laser dub for the bottom. And that's pretty much what I use these longer fibered uh, uh, for. Um, so, for instance, this one, this is uh, also by Fly Tires Dungeon. I like them a lot because they have some high quality stuff at pretty good prices. Um, but they, uh, you know, basically what you're doing is you're coming in and with a dubbing head, you want to pull it apart to make sure all the fibers are aligned, like so. And now, you can pull out some of the extra, which you're going to get, right there. Then now you've got a whole bunch of fibers that are all pointed the same way, um, for the most part. And pretty much the same length. I mean, they're, all the fibers are going to be the same length, but kind of evenly distributed with a little bit of taper at the ends. Um, and then a lot of times I'll just tie that in right in the center and then um, you've got a nice head when you fold it back over. This actually is synthetic fibers um, and very shiny almost like trilobal in a way like these right here super iridescent uh, fibers <clears throat> but uh, they also put the flash which is going to be kind of like this like UV dub um, or ice dub so there's going to be some flashiness in it as well. So it works really well for like bait fish patterns, something like that. I like this dubbing a lot, Arctic Wind by them. Uh, it's really good. Um, and it's similar to this, which is Laser Dub, which is going to be the same thing. The only difference is Laser Dub, the individual fibers are a little less uh, like shiny, but they still put the, the, sh the, um, the ice dub in there. But this is, you know, it's all synthetic, basically, same kind of thing. I use uh, ice dub, I'm sorry, laser dub and uh, the Arctic Wind. You know, I wouldn't say identically. Um, there are differences to it. Um, 
<clears throat> but uh, you know, the laser dub tends to puff out a little bit more. So if I want a bushier head, um, I use that um, Arctic Wind um, kind of compresses a little more, so it won't be as bushy. Uh, but there are differences to each. However, they're kind of close. You can use them almost identically uh, in the same way, just little differences. Um, so that's when I get something a little larger. Uh, for instance, this right here, when we were talking about nymphing, um, shorter fibers like this, this is shorter fibers. And there's a couple in there that are longer, that was weird. Um, but these are shorter fibers and this is all synthetic. So this is uh, similar to the Arctic Wind. Um, but they're shorter and I would you know mostly use this for uh, dubbing nips because this is going to sink this doesn't this doesn't want to uh, float um, it's going to allow the nip to sink and so but it's shorter fibers allows for a, a thinner and even uh, noodle uh, which is nice when you're uh, tying for uh, uh, for nips making nice even bodies, especially with that taper. And so this one's called Wee Folk, and it's also by Fly Tires Dungeon. I use a lot of Fly Tires Dungeons because it's cheap. Um, I think a bag of this is like 75 cents, and a bag of Laser Dove, look right there, $3. So I, you know, I can get a lot more. Now I do like this a lot, I use it. But it's expensive, so I use it only in certain situations. So again, for nymphing, uh, shorter, uh, when you're tying nymphs, in general, it's going to be shorter fibers, a little softer, easier to get that in there. But that's not always the case. I mean, you know, it depends on what type of nymph you're doing and how buggy you want that nymph to look, right? So, <clears throat> but, um, so when we're talking about uh, streamers and larger uh, flies or even um, <clears throat> dubbing, you can even use dubbing uh, for specific looks like uh, legs on a uh, nymph. And this would be a really good dubbing for that. This is called the Kraken Dubbin, and it's also by Fly Tires Dungeon. <laughs> and this is not an advertisement, guide, by the way, guys, for Fly Tires Dungeon. It's just, that's what I have because I use it a lot. Um, because it's good stuff and, and it's a good price, and I'm, I'm a cheapo. Uh, but <clears throat> this has little rubber legs in it. So these, let me see if I can take one. You can see that stretches. That's a rubber leg, and these have little rubber legs in it. Comes in all different colors, and um, be really good when you dub this on, and then kind of brush it out, and you get these little legs. It looks kind of like a nymph, um, a little more nymphy, a little more buggy, um, <clears throat> and uh, that you know that can be used uh, very well like that. I've also used this for other circumstances, other than uh, bug legs. Um, it can work uh, pretty well for like crab. Um, patterns and whatnot, okay? Um, but that's a really interesting dubbing um, and pretty cool stuff actually. I do like it a lot. The only problem is it gets messy and it's hard to clean up those legs. But um, those are obviously longer fibers or it's about that long. Um, so it makes actually decent with uh, streamers as well. Um, but with those rubber legs it just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Um, then comes, uh, so this is all synthetic. Uh, you can get natural. So this actually is called Franken Dub, um, Monster Dub actually, um, by Franken Dub Company. And the Monster Dub is, you know, pretty long fibers. You can tell right there. I pulled some out, and that's that's about the fiber length. Now uh, I think this comes from. So this is natural mixed with uh, basically synthetic. It's a lot like Laser Dub where it's bushy, it kind of puffs out a little bit, um, but it does have some natural mixed in. And the natural is alpaca. I'm pretty sure it's alpaca from what I remember reading. Um, so there's a mixture of different uh, kinds of material. And what that does is gives you different properties. Every material that you use has a different property. Um, for instance, like we were talking, um, hairline dubbing with uh, it uses rabbit and rabbit doesn't um, expel water it actually will soak it up and so what this does is allows for the nymph to sink but you can use something that might look pretty close or you know might have a little different properties and it'll make the fly float and so it really depends on what you're looking for also this has guard hairs blah 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 right so there's a bunch of differences with the different material and mixing material 
is um, something that a lot of companies will do to give a certain specific effect. But this monster dub is really good for dubbing heads on flies. I've actually, I've got a fly where I've tied on video um, where I interchange the two because the underline um, is basically laser dub. Um, it's basically identical to laser dub when the Franken dub and then they add the alpaca in there. Um, so the, you know, the baseline of this is basically laser dub with some alpaca mixed in. And it changes it up just slightly and makes it um, maybe a little even bushier than laser dub. It's kind of bushes out, bushes out a little bit more. So it's nice. I've used that uh, a couple times um, on video. And uh, it, it works really well. Um, and then you can move into other kinds of dubbing. Dubbing uh, that basically is completely different. Um, you kind of use it almost in a completely different way than any of these. So trilobal dubbing. Um, trilobal dubbing, as you can see, that's super shiny. But it does not have any ice dub, which is going to be um, like a super shiny. Uh, it's basically Angelina fiber. Look that up. Look up Angelina fiber. You basically you can get the, like... 20 bucks, you can get a package of Angelina fiber that is huge. Now, you might never use it, so it's nice to buy these in smaller packages, but that's basically what, what Ice Dub is. There is none of that in here. There's none of that super shiny. Uh, so, sorry, my camera died in the middle of that, but uh, trilobal dubbing. Basically, trilobal dubbing is a little shinier, and how they achieve that is the strands actually are a triangle. And therefore, when light comes in, it refracts out a little more shiny. In fact, uh, I wasn't sure about that, uh, but a while back I started using this and one of my subscribers told me that. So, um, thanks, you know who you are. Thank you very much for telling me that. Uh, that's really interesting. So that's basically what trilobal dubbing is, and that's why it's so shiny. It's really iridescent, almost, like uh, almost as much as like ice dub. Only this is flat and this is a super shiny material. Uh, that's how they achieve that with the trilobal. It's really good stuff too. Um, but basically I use this for a number of things actually and uh, it can be nips, it can be uh, uh, dubbing heads, it can be four streamers. And um, one last thing I do use um, it for is actually four streamers. You can build a whole streamer out of dubbing if you have the right kind of dubbing. So. Um, Laser dub is a really good example. You can build an entire, uh, different colors of it, um, basically an entire streamer, not just the head. Um, again, smaller, depending on the length of the fibers, but you can tell it's pretty long there. And you tie that in, you got a nice little tail, and you can actually build it up, kind of like you would any other uh, material. And so, you know, this is, this is basically a little rundown of dubbing. Um, you know, all the different dubbings have different properties. So, you know, you've got um, really fine and short fibers, and you're gonna you're gonna get a really easy to dub on noodle. It is really soft, and it dubs on really nice. Is the micro fine I was talking about same as the super fine? Pretty much identical stuff. Um, and this is really easy to use, especially for small little flies. But you might not want those properties. There's different properties with every single type of material. You know, like I said, you've got different properties with uh, natural. So this is the hair tron, so they've got little bits of um, other stuff in it. But, you know, those guard hairs. And as you can see, you know, when you dub it on, it definitely, you get more of a buggy feel. It kind of sticks out more. And uh, after you brush it even more, you're going to get more of that bugginess um, with the different sized fibers with those guard hairs. Uh, so, you know, that's the thing. So when someone tells you, you know, a certain type of dubbing, uh, you can always change it out. You can try something new. When they say use a, a dry fly dubbing and you're tying on a size 20 or less, uh, you probably want to stick with something like a super fine or um, micro fine or one of these um, really, really fine dubbings, you know? Um, but if it's a little larger, uh, you can change it up. Um, you know, if you're if you're tying nymphs and people tell you to use a certain type of dubbing on a pattern, um, you can always change it up. Use something different. 
Um, again, this um, the Hairtron and the Wee Folk. Uh, the Wee Folk ten is is all synthetic, uh, but they're pretty similar in the way that they dub on. Uh, you just don't get the guard hair, so it's a little less buggy. You get more of an even look, but but you know um, it depends on what you're going for. But once you learn the properties of every type of dubbing, or the most common ones at least, when someone suggests something, it gives you the ability to try to use something else. So. That's why I wanted to do this. I wanted you guys to understand that um, the different properties of types of dubbing, and um, you know how how to use them, and and when you're looking at a, a pattern online, then you know well. Okay, I don't have that, but I have this. You know, for instance, um, or I don't have this one, but I've got this. You might be able to actually change these two out and uh, use them. Uh, use a different one. You know or to try to make your own, you know, by using something completely different, maybe. So, there we have it. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope uh, it, it gave you some information. And it was very informative for you. So, hopefully, hopefully it did help you with um, learning about dubbing. So, I will see you on the next video. Now, you go catch some fish.